Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to the Marriage Material Podcast. This is a, as a podcast where we read selections of the Wikipedia pages of famous people, and then we talk about whether or not they're marriage material. We rate them on hotness, on stability, and bonus points, whatever we want it to be, pretty much. I actually have a very nice, I have a guest with me today. We've got Miss Tori Ward. Say hello, Tori. Hi. Tori's a Portland comic. You can follow her on Instagram, and she's got a brand spanking new Twitter. So help her bump <laughs> those followers up. <laughs> brand spanking new, baby. <laughs> so at today's episode three, Tori and I, we're going to be talking about Malcolm X, very mm-hmm. prominent historical figure. Uh, and we're just going to get, I'm going to read the Wikipedia pages, and we're just going to get right into it. So here we go. We're about going to talk about Malcolm X now. Malcolm Little was born on May 19th, 1925 in Omaha, Nebraska, the fourth of seven children of Granada-born Louise Helen Little and Georgia-born Earl Little. Earl was an outspoken Baptist lay speaker, and he and Louise were admirers of Pan-African activist Marcus Garvey. Uh, Earl was a local leader of the UNIA, an organization dedicated to racial pride, economic self-sufficiency, and the formation of an independent Black nation in Africa. Malcolm X later said that white violence killed four of his father's brothers. Not ideal. Not not uh-uh. great. He's going to be a super uh-uh. intense kid. It's already yeah. clear. Like, he's, yeah. he's got a lot of working against him here. To, yeah. Yeah, I don't think... It makes sense that he's not a happy-go-lucky fella at right. this point, you know? Let's see. Maybe... We'll find out. Let's find out more. Uh, because of Ku Klux Klan threats, Earl's UNIA, UNIA, UNIA activities were said to be spreading trouble, and the family relocated in 1926 to Milwaukee and shortly after, thereafter to Lansing, Michigan. There, the family was frequently harassed by the Black Legion, a white racist group. Earl accused of burning... What a weird name for a white supremacist group. The yeah. Black Legion. It's just very confusing. Like, do you think they get some, like, some black dude showing up? Like, wait a minute. This is not what I signed up for. The name was very misleading. Uh, When Malcolm was six, his father died in what has been officially ruled a streetcar accident, though his mother, Louise, believed Earl had been murdered by the Black Legion. Again. The Black Legion also sounds like a comic book. Doesn't it sound like a comic book gang of supervillains? Yeah, like The Hand. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it, it, it just sounds, it sounds like they all have like super cute costumes. I don't want to call the Black Legion cute, but I bet they had super cute costumes, you know? Yeah. 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 Like uh, look, the KKK uh, awful organization, but white sheets and a ghost costume is cute. It's kind of, it's kind of cute. <laughs> Obviously we're not saying it's a good thing, but they have, if they, if they were just like a bunch of kids running around town, it'd be kind of cute. Oh yeah, so uh, their costumes are their their actions are monstrous. Yeah, yeah. Costumes are adorable. Costumes so adorable. are See, very adorable. An old racist grandma seamstressing all these costumes together and making cookies for terrible fucking grandchildren. Mm-hmm. And yeah. the amount of like laundry care that like goes into maintaining. I mean, I I bet none of their wives ever left the house ever, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so For it so makes sense. Reasons. Yeah. yeah. It makes Walking sense that they were shit, building crosses, you know, so much work to do for a KKK wife. Hey, a woman's a woman's work is never done. <laughs> you think there were any like women's rights advocates in the KKK like being just there had to be, right? <laughs> like yeah. there had they yeah. Anyway. <laughs> they were just they were just like advocating for like a color of sheet that hid stains they were like you got come on we're like we don't have enough think we about need clorox clorox for every household uh, what if there's a, a feminist book that comes out that's like the invisible women of the kkk <laughs> when feminism just goes way too far Peace white feminism. <laughs> do you think the kkk is like endorsed like is like Sponsored by Tide Pens, you know, like they always yeah. have Tide Pens on them to get the, the splashes out, you know? It's really funny. <laughs> All right. 
When Mal, oh, we already did that. Uh, rumors that white racists were responsible for his father's death were widely circulated and were very disturbing to Malcolm X as a child. That would be weird if it wasn't disturbing. Again, very intense kid we've got developing here. As an adult, he expressed conflicting beliefs on the question. After a dispute with creditors, Louise received a life insurance payment, nominally $1,000, about $17,000 today, pretty solid, in payments of $18 per month. Uh, the issue of another larger policy refused to pay, claiming her husband Earl had committed suicide. What? Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit. The audacity of these people. At least make your racism clever. You know what I yeah. mean? Come on. Yeah. Ah, he killed himself. He was in a car accident. He killed himself. (laughs) Uh, To make ends meet, Luis rented out part of her garden and her son's hunted game. Ooh, Malcolm's a hunter. Ooh. Okay, self-sufficient. He's a self-sufficient boy. Where do you, where did they live? What kind of game did they hunt? This needs its own section. This needs its own. (laughs) They were living in. Malcolm the Young Hunter. Malcolm the Young Hunter, yeah. They were in Milwaukee and then Lansing, Michigan. So I think they're in Michigan at this point, hunting, what, moose? What's in Michigan? Uh Yeah, moose. I'm going to say Malcolm's a moose hunter. Malcolm the Moose Hunter. Okay, Malcolm the Moose Hunter. Got it. Yeah, I'm super into it so far, right? I don't know, like, I'm not a gun person or super into hunting, but it is hot. It is just undeniably hot to me. Uh, What do you think? You think that's, are you on board with that too? Are you thinking... You, oh, I think it's super hot. Hunting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. super hot. Same thing where I'm like, I wouldn't do it. It's barbarous. Ugh, but like, <laughs> but it's so oh, fucking hot. Yeah. Bring that head home, baby. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, in 1937, a man Louise had been dating, marriage had seemed a possibility, vanished from her life when she became pregnant with his child. Ooh. In, in late... 1938, she had a nervous breakdown and was committed to Kalamazoo State Hospital. Not, Where's Kalamazoo? Is that the uh, name of the place? Uh, it sounds made up. It sounds like a Narnia. It's a Narnia. She went to Narnia. That's, yeah, that's what, it sounds like. <laughs> it sounds like she died and they made up a story. Like, ah, oh, we sent her to the farm. She's fine. <laughs> it sounds like a, 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 oh, what's, there's like a Disney, a Disney movie with, oh my God. Oh, no, why I'm, do I, I ever talk? If you talk? give me any details, I will be able to do <laughs> that. <nail it. laughs> <laughs> Bring it together and what have you got? Bibbidi bobbidi boo. Oh my god. Oh my god. Kalamazoo. That's what it sounds like. Kalamazoo. Kalamazoo. What the fuck? Oh, it's Cinderella. Cinderella. Okay. Yes. Killing it. Anyways, I'm sure it was an unpleasant experience, but it sounds really, really silly. <laughs> I, you, you know, if if you could, the silliest mental breakdown I've ever heard. <laughs> if you could obfuscate all the um, pain and suffering and hatred and violence, if you just got rid of that, the ghost costumes and the Kalamazoo <laughs> State Hospital. <laughs> we got a real silly story developing here. We got a real wacky time. <laughs> Uh, Malcolm and his siblings, though, happy ending to his mom, re- secured her release 24 years later. It's 24 years in prison. They got her out. Uh, Malcolm attended West Junior High School in Lansing and then Mason High School in Mason, Michigan, but left high school in 1941 before graduating. He excelled in junior high school, but dropped out of high school after a white teacher told him that practicing law, his aspiration at the time, was no realistic Ooh. goal for a black person. Uh, okay. Again, uh, yeah. Malcolm's real getting really getting the short end of the stick here. Later, Malcolm X recalled feeling that the white world offered no place for a career-oriented black man, regardless of talent. Uh, from age 14 to 21, Malcolm held a variety of jobs while living with his half, half-sister, Ella Little Collins in Roxbury, a largely African-American neighborhood of Boston. He was a working man, holding out all kinds of jobs, staying with his sister, Mm -hmm. very stable very grounded especially considering what happened to him way back when oh yeah i'm into it he's keeping his stability levels high hotness we don't really know much about yet hotness is still up in the air though you look at pictures he's like historically hot like he's he's very good looking so yeah yeah he is but it's more so like how hot is the relationship you know what i mean how exciting is it how much how thrilling is it you you feel me with that level of childhood trauma there's no way it's not 
great. He's, he's just boring, just as a puzzle every night. <laughs> um, just, he has he has he has the personality of a white kid who grew up in the suburbs. Yeah. You're just like, how are you? <laughs> Honey, chicken piccata's ready. <laughs> He's wearing like a kiss the cook apron. Yeah. <laughs> He's barbecuing. Totally, oh. totally adjusted after everything that happened to him. <laughs> um, after a short time in Flint, Michigan, uh, he moved to New York City's Harlem neighborhood in 1943, where he found employment on the New Haven Railroad and engaged in drug dealing, gambling, racketeering, robbery, and pimping. Now he's getting hot. Now yeah. we're seeing the hotness points build up. Super into that. Okay. According to recent biographies, Malcolm also occasionally had sex with other men, usually for money, though this conjecture has been disputed by those who knew him. I hope it's true. I yeah, really me too. hope it's true. Yeah. I don't want to make any assumptions, but that that's just automatically a bonus, you know? Yeah. Bisexuals are just hotter than than straight people. Like yeah. it's something I can do about it. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, it's just like a, I don't know. I couldn't put it into words, probably because I'm bi and I just want to. Especially when it comes from somebody who uh, you wouldn't expect. Yeah, I think that's. He's a really religious guy. Like he's all about the nation of Islam for a while, at least. Uh, I think there's something really hot about uh, uh, dudes who are like very masculine. Like uh you think they'd be like homophobic. They're so like. And then, yeah. and then like, they fuck guys. Dickhead. Yeah, and you're like, <laughs> why? Whoa. What? How Whoa. is that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's super hot to me. So he's killing it so far. We're going to assume it's true that he is yeah. gay, gay for pay, which honestly, even hotter. <laughs> even hotter. Um, summoned by the local draft board for military service in World War II, he feigned mental disturbance by rambling and declaring... I want to be sent down to the South, organize them black soldiers, steal us some guns, and kill us some crackers. Uh, he, he was declared mentally disqualified for military service. The original get out of jury duty. Like yeah. he pulled it off. He yeah. coined that. He started it. That was a good line. Like that's exactly what he needed to say. Yeah. What was in the fifties? World War Two. They said it. Okay. Yeah, that would have been a bummer. That would have been a real bummer. Good for you, Malcolm. He's crafty. And I'm yeah. Into yeah. Very sharp boy. Very sharp boy. Very hot boy. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of life left to live. Let's see what happens. We don't know anything about stability yet. Because right now, not very stable. Not very stable. No, that's true. Yeah. No. Jumping around. I feel like our hotness and stability a little bit of like antithesis. antithesis. It's a little give and take. It is possible yeah. to have both like... Um, if your day-to-day life is exciting, but kind of, you know what? Like, if he hikes. <laughs> there is, they are kind of, like, one does the other. There's exceptions, like, Ruth Bader Ginsburg got a 10 in stability, because she couldn't have been a more stable wife. Then right. she got an 8 in hotness, because uh, she, uh, it's been a while, but there's, <laughs> there is some overlap. I like that. Like, 10 in stability because of this, and 8 in hotness because... We felt like we should. Because <laughs> I'm trying to be good. Um, in late 1945, Malcolm returned to Boston, where he and four accomplices committed a series of burglaries targeting wealthy white families. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what you do. In 1946, he was arrested while picking up a stolen watch he had left at a shop for repairs. What a way. To, that's not that's a that's a lame way to get caught <laughs> getting a watch fixed. Yeah. Uh, and in February again, and in February began serving an eight to ten year sentence at Charlestown State Prison for larceny and breaking and entering. Uh, when Malcolm was in prison, he met he met fellow convict John Bembry, a self educated man. He would later describe as the first man I had ever seen command total respect with words. He totally sucked his dick, by the way. Absolutely yeah. sucked his dick. I'm sure of it. I am determined. <laughs> To prove his bisexuality. <laughs> well, uh, I love, I'm looking at the Wikipedia page and there's an ellipses. It's 
the first man I've ever seen command with total respect. With, with words. words. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, under Bembry's influence, Malcolm developed a voracious appetite for reading and also for dicks. Also for mm-hmm. dicks at the same time. Anytime there's an ellipsis, we need to just assume it's a dick. We need to assume some gay shit is happening every yeah. time there's an ellipsis. Yeah. There's a lot of them. So we assume he, he's sucking a lot of dick. Lots of and dicks in here. Being one of the most influential people in the 20th century. But more importantly, sucking some dick. Sucking That's what matters. Dick. Mm-hmm. Uh, at this time, several of his siblings wrote to him about the Nation of Islam, a relatively new religious movement preaching black self-reliance and ultimately the return of the African diaspora to Africa, where they would be free from white and European domination. He showed scant interest at first, but after his brother Reginald wrote in 1948, Malcolm, don't eat any more pork and don't smoke any more cigarettes. I'll show you how to get out of prison. That's a tough that's a tough sell when you're in prison. Like, yeah. there's not much else going on. Yeah. To not eat pork and smoke. Those are like two of the greatest things in the world. Uh-huh. Two of the absolute greatest things in the world. Oh. So he's committed. Very committed to this. He quit smoking and began to refuse pork. <laughs> <laughs> I think... <laughs> what if pork's just a euphemism? Listen, they're trying really hard to cover it up. But yeah. he's like, his brother was like, uh, you're going to have to start turning down the pork. You know what I mean, you, Malcolm? We you all, know, we've all heard the stories. We all know about it. So we all know about the pork. You're going to have to start. Uh, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> After a visit in which Reginald described the group's teachings, including the belief that white people are devils, Malcolm concluded that every relationship he had with whites had been tainted by dishonesty, injustice, greed, and hatred. Malcolm, whose hostility to religion had earned him the prison name, prison nickname, Satan. (laughs) What the fuck? What a 180 turn. From this dude to the dude with the glasses and the suit and the family and all that, you know? Yeah. Wow. Satan. Um. His prison nickname was Satan. (laughs) In uh, late 1948, Malcolm wrote to Elijah Muhammad, the leader of the Nation of Islam. Muhammad advised him to renounce his past. He kind of had to if he was going to be religious. Uh, Humbly bow in prayer to God and promise never to engage in destructive behavior again. Though he later recalled the inner struggle he had before bending his knees to pray. To pray. (laughs) Then, you know, we know what he's doing. Uh, Malcolm soon became a member of the Nation of Islam, maintaining a regular correspondence with Muhammad. He's got a pen pal. That's yeah. cute. Yeah. Pal. Okay. I'm sure, yeah. I like it. I'm sure that's really healthy, too, while you're in prison. You know what I mean? To, yeah. like, have outside relationships. I bet he, like, really, like, looked forward to his letters. He was like, oh, I got yeah. one. Oh, I wonder what he said. This is the letter before he sends it. Uh-huh. Spray some perfume on it, you know? This <laughs> is so cute. What a cute... You- <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dear pen pal, dear best, <laughs> best pen pal ever. I'm not eating pork anymore, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> um, in 1950, the FBI opened a file on Malcolm after he wrote a letter from prison to President Truman expressing opposition to the Korean War and declaring himself a communist. Bold! Hell yeah. yeah. I mean, you're already in prison. I guess it's not a big deal. So, yeah, I'm a communist too. Whatever. Suck my dick. Yeah. Yeah. That year, he also began signing his name Malcolm X. Fucking baller, by the way. Yeah. What a cool name. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. Wait, what was his... his uh... Malcolm Little, which is not well, at all intimidating. You're going to have to... Yeah. Like you're yeah, going to have to fix that or... I just... Actually... <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Which is more baller, though, Malcolm X or Malcolm Little? It's like the boy named Sue. Like, if you could command a crowd with the last (laughs) name Little. Muhammad instructed his followers to leave their family names behind when they joined the Nation of Islam and use X instead. That's fucking cool. Yeah, I wish Malcolm did it on his own, though. It's not that hot to have someone have daddy telling you what to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's formative years. 
it, it is cooler when you think he was just like Malcolm X. Yeah, like that sounds yeah. fucking rad. But um, I, I just feel like I just think it's cool in the sense that like I would join something if they were like your name's gonna be X. I'd be like, <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm in. And they're like, wait, yeah, you haven't even absolutely. heard what the religion is. Yeah, I don't, I don't need <laughs> I, to. I don't care. Uh, in his autobiography, Malcolm X explained that the X symbolized the true African family name that he could never know. For me, my X replaced the white slave master name of Little, which some blue-eyed devil named Little had imposed on my paternal... It does seem like a very white name. Little. Yeah. Yeah, like uh, Todd Little. You know what I mean? After his parole in August 1952, Malcolm X visited Elijah Muhammad in Chicago. In June 1953... He was named assistant minister of the nation's temple number one in Detroit. Man, he's moving fast. So he's like right out of jail, right out the gate, just starting shit. That's a a go-getter. I'm seeing some stability here. Yeah. Now that he's got his reckless phase out, he's gone through prison, he's religious now, and he's just moving, you know, very stable. So Mm -hmm. he's really up in the stability points here. He lost maybe one hotness point because of his relationship with Elijah Muhammad. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the whole X not being his idea. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But he's somebody who always is in the, he seems like somebody who's always in the thick of it, who like always has a bunch of shit. Yeah, he's happening. not complacent. Complacent no. is the opposite. He's going for it. Which I appreciate it. A go getter is hot. Like the thing is though, you don't want someone who's addicted to work. You know what I mean? You got to have time for the family, you got to have time for the wife, you know? So that's oh, yeah. the problem there. That's true. For for me, I have to have someone that ignores me. So I feel like <laughs> I feel like <laughs> I I feel like he would be a really good contender. I need yeah, somebody I'm who I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I need to spend like most of my relationships going, why won't you look at me in my head? That's like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm on the same page there. <laughs> Well, see, he's, he's about to get married. Coming up soon here. Okay. Um, in 1953, the FBI began surveillance of him, turning its attention from Malcolm X's possible communist associations to his rapid, rapid ascent in the nation of Islam. So he's just got all kinds of stuff working against him right now. Government was. Government is like this guy. No, 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 no. Didn't they call him Malcolm X or Malcolm Little? Like in a degrading, like Malcolm Little. Oh, I bet I bet they called him Malcolm Little. There's yeah. no way they respected his last name. <laughs> when Malcolm's like, whoa, 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 whoa. The X represents African ancestry. Let's be chill, guys. <laughs> uh, besides his skill as a speaker, Malcolm X had an impressive <laughs> physical presence. <laughs> had an impressive physical presence. He stood six foot three inches tall, taller than me. No guy is taller than me. What a treat for me. How tall Tell are me. you? I'm six feet. Okay. Yeah, so I rarely date anyone who's my height or taller. The thing is, I like, like, beta boys. So I uh-huh. usually wind up going for, like, five, six boys. You know what I mean? You have that joke? I never heard it before. I watched that set, Skin Suit, which I didn't oh, see yeah. when you did it. And at the end, uh, you have that joke about uh, the guys... I'm really into tiny guys and big girls, so my perfect threesome could never hang out on a seesaw. <laughs> that was one joke that never hit. But... Are you serious? It was no. my favorite. I was like, why have I never? And then I told Kyle, and Kyle and I were both laughing about it. We're like, why does that ever make you so angry when really good jokes, you find out that like, oh, that never hits. And you're like, it's- Big girl, why? And, and girls and little boys loved it, but that was about it. I think everyone felt guilty. I didn't know if they were allowed oh, to laugh at it. It was one of those, like, is this a fat joke? Should we pull back? Should we? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Of course, you know? But Yeah, that's like a perfect joke. I Yeah, I was, I, it made me laugh. Out. I was like watching it and I was like, it made me laugh out loud super hard. <laughs> yeah, all my ex-boyfriends have been super beta and super small. And it's not on purpose, Mm-hmm. I'm just I feel I'm, like tired, it's per- I'm tired of defaulting into being the top. I'm really tired of it. <laughs> I want uh-huh. a bottom too. I want to do both. Mama's verse, you know? Verse mama. That's gonna oh, that's gonna be my Twitter handle. Verse mama. Okay, okay, I gotta write that down. I'm gonna write that down in the middle of this. Verse mama. Follow me on Twitter after this. Verse mama. 
uh, currently needy comedian. So I'm going to go for Verse Mama instead. First, I like that. Yeah. Okay, here we go. We're talking about his wife now. We're getting into his okay, wife. Okay, sorry. In 1955, Betty Sanders met Malcolm X after one of his lectures, then again at a dinner party. Soon she was regularly attending his lectures. Cute. In 1956, she joined the Nation of Islam, changing her name to Betty X. They already had the same last name. Meant to be married. Betty, Betty X. Betty X is fucking a hot name. <laughs> Betty Hi, X. I'm Betty, Betty X. X. It sounds like one word. Betty X. Betty, Betty X. X. Oh, yeah. Betty yeah. X. Betty X. It sounds like a, a FedEx spinoff. You know, Betty X. <laughs> it's how they deliver, like, mail order brides to you is through Betty, Betty X. X. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Uh, one-on-one dates were contrary to the nation's teaching. Lame, by the way. It's just Let's just say it right here. Every religion kind of sucks. Uh, yeah. Let's just put that out there. One on one day, how are you supposed to get to know? Okay. Anyway, I'm getting off track here. Is uh, it like The Godfather, where they like go on the date and then the like family follows? I think behind? so. It's like the the couple courted at social events with dozens or hundreds of others. And Malcolm X made a point of inviting her on the frequent group visits he led to New York City's museums and libraries. They're so fucking cute. Look at this. Yeah. And he's when uh, he's courting someone, he's being super stable right now. He's just being a yeah. straight up husband, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is, I think he might be the perfect. Okay. Keep he's going. He's killing it. Like, the only thing he is working against him right now is his relationship with Elijah Muhammad. It's, it's yeah. him, like, you know, kissing daddy's ass. Uh huh. Um, Malcolm X proposed during a telephone call from Detroit in January 19th. That's a me move. That's what I do. I can't tell you how many times I have asked people out of a Facebook messenger. That is, that is. Seriously? Yeah. Oh, seriously. That's like a go-to move for me. It's so low stakes. It works sometimes. Yeah. Like one fifth of the time, they don't even realize I asked them out. They're just like, yeah, let's go hang out. Why not? And then. Wow, that's so smooth. Yeah. But most of the time, I'm just like, when it was a comedian, I'd be like, hey, you want to hang out in like a non-comedy way? And they got the vibe, generally, because uh, uh, I'm a big old, big old whore, big old horsky. So it works out. Tori, you're like taking notes right now. I know I am. <laughs> this is my, this is my, I'm uh, in person and I go, hey, sometime, do you want to, uh, do you want to, would you want to, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, like yeah, never mind. No, never mind. No, never mind. <laughs> Go home. <laughs> you were a very nervous lady. Like, I remember you used to, like, want to go up at the end of Mike's because you just did a very, very anxious lady. I get Don't that. look at me. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> I um, will invite them out. They'll think it'll be for a hookup, and then I'll try and trap them in a relationship, and then oh, they'll say yeah. no, and then I start over. It's a whole cycle. You know I, I do mean? that. I'm a trapper. Yeah. I want to do a joke right. about that, about somebody being like, um, uh, like, God, your pussy's tight. And then like, I'm never, cause I'm never letting go. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. That's gold. That's a good bit. <laughs> like, why so can't tight. I get it out? Cause you, you're not going to let you go. <laughs> <laughs> You've been inside me now. <laughs> <laughs> you live here. <laughs> Enjoy your home. <laughs> um, he proposed. Uh, they had six daughters. Six daughters. So a very a big family man. Oh wow! Yeah, uh, all girls. How, so how bad do you think he wanted a boy? <laughs> <laughs> so badly. So oh, badly. Oh, poor so like the shit. Like all this, like stuff like this, always comes with a little hint of toxic masculinity. You know what I mean? There's oh yeah. Little, definitely wanted the boy. Absolutely. <laughs> boy. Uh, oh Not the next junior. Six uh, girls. <laughs> the American public first became aware of Malcolm X in 1957 after Hinton Johnson, a Nation of Islam member, was beaten by two New York City police officers. On April 26th, Johnson and two other passerby, also Nation of Islam members, saw the officers beating an African-American man with nightsticks. When they attempted to intervene, shouting, you're not in Alabama, this is New York, uh, one of the officers turned on Johnson, 
beating him so severely that he suffered brain contusions and subdural hemorrhaging. Malcolm X and a small group of Muslims went to the police station and demanded to see Johnson. Uh, Police initially denied that any Muslims were being held, but when the crowd grew to about 500, they allowed Malcolm X... Yeah, dude. (laughs) Holy shit. They allowed (coughs) Malcolm X to speak with Johnson. Afterward, Malcolm X insisted on arranging for an ambulance to take Johnson to Harlem Hospital. This dude gets shit done. Do you think... Did 500 people, like, just gather while he was demanding? Or did, was it, like, a he plan? Must have had, like, they must have had, like, a, you know, a, a support system, like a group he was a part of. Nation of Islam members, probably, you know? Oh, yeah, Maybe sure. he just okay. stood out front, and people just like, hey, that dude's wearing a suit. Let's see what he has to say. He's Let's just so him. magnetic. Yeah. 6'3", hot as fuck. Hot so hot. fuck. <laughs> Holy yeah. shit. Just yeah. looks wise, We're, that's, and also his personality. Personality oh, yeah. super fucking hot. If he just hadn't limp dicked with Elijah, then it would be impeccable. But that's the only thing working against him. This because his young, like reckless face, he wasn't ready to be a husband yet, and he got it all out of his system. So now mm-hmm. he's ready to be a stable, good husband. Six daughters. You know, I feel like daughters make you sweet too. I bet he had a real yeah. soft side. Yeah, <laughs> Johnson's injuries. Uh, were treated, and by the time he was returned to the police station, some 4,000 people had gathered outside. Holy shit. Holy shit. What the fuck? This dude could draw a crowd. Inside the station, Malcolm X and an attorney were making bail arrangement for two of the Muslims. Johnson was not bailed, and police said he could not go back to the hospital until his arraignment the following day. Considering the situation to be at an impasse, Malcolm X stepped outside of the station house and gave a hand signal to the crowd. Nation members silently left, after which the rest of the crowd also dispersed. So he just went out, waved his hand, and everyone left. Oh, this is so fucking cool. Yeah, right? Like, I think this, this what he's doing here kind of uh, dwarfs his relationship with Elijah Muhammad. So he might be earning a 10 out of 10 in hotness. I'm married yeah. material first. A 10 out of 10 on the hotness scale. The coming out and doing the hand signal and then the members silently leap, like... That's fucking rad. That is yeah. so cool. Yeah. Like, we had... Stalin got a 9 in hotness. Um, Cleopatra and George Bush got an 8. Uh, Cleopatra lost some points because she was married to her much younger brother. But she, she lost some hotness points in that. But he could be the first 10. Who knows? Let's yeah. find out. Uh... By the late 1950s, Malcolm X was using a new name, Malcolm Shabazz or Malik El Shabazz, although he was still widely he, he was still widely referred to as Malcolm X. Uh, by the late 1950s, Malcolm X, his comments on issues and events were being widely reported in print on radio and on television, and he was featured in a 1959 New York City television broadcast about the Nation of Islam, the hate that hate produced. From his adoption of the Nation of Islam in 1952 until he broke with it in 1964, Malcolm X promoted the nation's teachings. These included beliefs that black people were the original people of the world, that white people are devils, can confirm, Mm -hmm. uh, that blacks are superior to whites, and that the demise of the white race is imminent. Definitely. Absolutely it is. And we are going to go down hard, too. It's going to be gnarly. And you know what? Good. We deserve it. Uh, I think I won some points for saying that, didn't I? Yeah? Yeah, 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 oh, yeah. 100%. I'm fucking performative like crazy over here. Yeah. I think uh, back when he was getting out of the draft or whatever it was, World War II, uh-huh. and when, when he was like, go down south, get an army, uh, I think I think he was just like, eh, I'm just going to tell him how I feel. <laughs> Just going to add kind of a weird look in my eyes while I say what I really think. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) I appreciate that. I'm like, you should do that, Malcolm. Go for it. Uh, Many whites and some blacks were alarmed by Malcolm X and the statements he made during this period. He and the Nation of Islam were described as hate mongers, black supremacists, racists, violence seekers, segregationists, and a threat to improved race relations. He was accused of being anti-Semitic. They just threw that in. <laughs> they didn't offer any proof. Okay. He's an anti-Semite, apparently. Okay. 
<laughs> hey, listen, we've all got stuff, you know. We've all we've got all something. Got... Yeah. Uh, in 1961, Malcolm X spoke at a NOI rally alongside George Lincoln Rockwell, the head of the American Nazi Party. What <laughs> the fuck? I'm curious. They have piqued my interest. Let's yeah. be more to this. Rockwell claimed that there was overlap between black nationalism and white supremacy. One of the Okay, goals... wait, so he's speaking with sorry. He's... No, it's okay. He's speaking Who... at an NOA NOI rally alongside the head of the American Nazi Party. So he's What's speaking... NOI? Something Nazi. Okay. Something cool. to do with Nazis. Nazis on Nazis Instagram. <laughs> Nazis on Instagram. They Ahead have, of like, his uh, time. A they revolutionary. Have a filter that turns your face white regardless of what's <laughs> 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 uh, um, One of the goals of the civil rights movement was to end disenfranchisement of African Americans, but the Nation of Islam forbade its members from participating in voting and other aspects of the political process. Okay. The NAACP and other civil rights organizations denounced him and the Asian of, Nation of Islam as irresponsible extremists whose views did not represent the common interests of African Americans. Malcolm X was equally critical of the civil rights movement. He called Martin Luther King Jr. a chump. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to guess pussy and it wasn't that far <laughs> off. What if he had said, just, <laughs> you fucking pussy? I'm okay, though, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Trump That's basically Trump. what he said. Yeah. Yeah, That's- but Trump is like the religious alternative to pussy and, and bitch. Yeah. Trump. Okay. Like that Trump. stings in church. Like if you call someone a chump, like Satan is a chump. That's what they say in church. You know? I feel like I'm gonna start saying that. I it, forgot I about that lot. word. It's a fun word. It's a oh, real it's fun such word. a good word. And if yeah. people are like, "Why do you say chump?" I'm gonna be like, "Well, Malcolm X actually." Uh- <laughs> <laughs> Malcolm X coined the term way back when. Yeah. Um, he also said other civil rights leaders were stooges of the white establishment. Again, stooges, killing it with his church words. Uh, he called the 1963 March on Washington the farce on Washington. All the bravado, by the way, super hot. All the bra- yeah, absolutely. Just cockiness, ego, being a dick, killing it in hotness. Yeah. And from what we've seen, killing it in stability, too. He's a, he's a figure in a major national movement or religion nation Mm -hmm. of islam and he's been married he's got six kids he proposed to his wife over the phone (laughs) just fucking because he had to because he had to because they weren't allowed to be solo and he can't just stop in the middle of like a group presentation i guess he could i don't know yeah i would hate that though all those like proposals where everyone's watching you know what i mean when you pose in public no Uh, absolutely not yeah i wouldn't like that either yeah Mm -hmm. i would say no just because i hate being told what to do. I resent yeah. being told what to do. Yeah. Too much pressure. I, I would say no, ju- and then I would, like, later that day be like... All right. All right, yeah, that's fine. Try right, again just, tomorrow and just do yeah. it in, in the living room. No and then if room. they were like, yeah, but you publicly humiliated me, I'd be like, yeah, I know. Yeah, she was on the other phone. <laughs> now where's the dickweed? Yeah. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. Well, the civil rights movement fought against racial segregation... Malcolm X advocated the complete separation of African Americans from whites. He proposed that African Americans should return to Africa and that in the interim, a separate country for black people in America should be created. Uh, He rejected the civil rights movement strategy of nonviolence, arguing that black people should defend and advance themselves by any means necessary. That's pretty hot. That's pretty Mm -hmm. hot. If someone's like, he's already targeted by the government, right? He's on the FBI list for communism, Nation of Islam. And he's also like, fucking, give me, bring it. Give me a gun. I'll go crazy on you, you know? That's that's hot. That's hot. Yeah. Killing it. His speeches had a powerful effect on his audiences, no shit, who were generally, the wave, just amazing, who were generally African Americans in northern and western cities. Many of them, tired of being told to wait for freedom, justice, equality, and respect, felt that he articulated their complaints better than did the civil rights movement. It's fair. Do you think they used the phrase articulated? I don't. Do, do, you think, do you think his supporters were like, 
You know, that black man's very articulate. <laughs> Just the well-meaning old white lady who's trying to say the right thing. He's so articulate. He's so articulate. I like his little bow tie. <laughs> uh, this is very relevant to Malcolm X's hotness here. Okay. Rumors were circulating that Muhammad was conducting extramarital affairs with young nation secretaries, which would constitute a serious violation of nation teachings. After first discounting the rumors, so Malcolm X did not believe the girls, not very me too with Malcolm X. Mm-mm. Malcolm X came to believe them after he spoke with Muhammad's son, Wallace, and with the woman making the accusations. So a little bit of redemption there. He had to check in with a, a man first to see if it was true. <laughs> Uh, Muhammad confirmed the rumors in 1963, attempting to justify his behavior by referring to precedents set by biblical prophets. So that loses him some hotness points for me. Yeah. Because he Muhammad diddling young secretaries. Mm-hmm. You know? That is his only demerit to me right now. Wait, M- Malcolm did? That was him who said there's precedent? Or Muhammad yeah. did it? Oh, Aww. no, Muhammad did that. You're right. Oh, I misread that. Okay. All right. So he, yeah, he still he in the clear. To believe in the woman. That actually wound up being a bonus for him mm-hmm. to be in the fifties and to be a proponent of Me Too already. Killing yeah. It. Mm-hmm. Killing it. Okay. Man, he might have a ten out of ten on hotness scale coming up here. Who knows? Malcolm X had by now become a media favorite, and some nation members believed he was a threat to Muhammad's leadership. Yeah. Publishers had shown that interest in Malcolm X's autobiography. And when Louis and when Louis Lomax wrote his 1963 book about the nation, when the word is given, he used a photograph of Malcolm X on the cover. Ooh, well, I just mad about that. Uh, he also reproduced five of his speeches, but featured only one of Muhammad's, all of which greatly upset Muhammad and made him envious. Yo, Muhammad's a dick. Yeah, a dick. Give he's the chump. Yeah, he's the chump. That's right, Tori. <laughs> Muhammad's the chump. He he brought. Malcolm X into the fold. He's like his protege, and now he's mad that he's succeeding. Because he, but it was he brought him in, but he wanted him. He wanted him to be subservient, like a yeah. nice little yeah. But Malcolm is not a number two guy. Mm-mm. Malcolm X gets shit done. He's a guy who waves a hand and a crowd disperses. <laughs> On March eighth, nineteen sixty four, Malcolm X publicly announced his break from the Nation of Islam. Though still a Muslim, he felt the nation had gone as far as it can because of its rigid teachings. So he's he's willing to he's willing to grow. He's a very mm-hmm. uh, he's a dynamic man. He's interesting. He's complex. He's growing. Loving it so far. But he's still with his wife. He's still got his kids. He's still a family man. Mm-hmm. Okay. He also expressed a desire to work with other civil rights leaders, saying that Elijah Muhammad had prevented him from doing so in the past. After leaving the Nation of Islam, Malcolm X founded Muslim Mosque Incorporated, a religious organization, and the Organization of Afro-American Unity, a secular group that advocated pan-Africanism. On March 26th, 1964, he briefly met Martin Luther King Jr., crossover episode, for the first and only time, and only long enough for photographs to be taken, in Washington, D.C., as both men attended the Senate's debate on the civil rights bill at the U.S. Capitol building. The, in, in April, Malcolm X gave a speech titled The Ballot or the Bullet, in which he ad, advised African Americans to exercise their right to vote wisely, but cautioned that if the government continued to prevent African Americans from attaining full equality, it might be necessary for them to take up arms. So that's the I best like of both that. worlds. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Malcolm X had already visited the United Arab Republic, Sudan, Nigeria, and Ghana in 1959 to make arrangements for a tour of Africa by Elijah Muhammad. After his journey to Mecca in 1964, he visited Africa for a second time. He returned to the United States in late May and flew to Africa again in July. During these visits, he met officials, gave interviews, and spoke on radio and television in Egypt, Ethiopia, Tanganyika, Tanganyika, I think, uh, Nigeria, Ghana, Guinea, Sudan, Senegal, Liberia, Algeria, and Morocco. Uh, in Cairo, he attended the second meeting of the Organization of African Unity as a representative of the OAAU. I swear to God, 
every historical figure has so many acronyms. It's mm-hmm. so hard to keep track of. Uh, by the end of his third visit, he had met with essentially all of Africa's prominent leaders. Of course, because he's he can get whatever he wants. Kwame Nkrumah of Ghana, Gamal Abdel Nasser of Egypt, and Ahmed Ben Bella of Arge- Algeria had all invited Malcolm X to serve in their governments. Oh, shit. They offered him government positions throughout, across Africa. Man. After he spoke at the University of Itaban, the Nigerian Muslim Students Association bestowed on him the honorary Yoruba name Omawale, the son who has come home. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah. Stay here, Malcolm. He later called this his most treasured honor. What a sweet boy. Yeah. Just like, what a sweet boy he is. Uh, so far, everything I'm reading is just all about hot. He's just killing it in hotness right now. He is killing it in hotness. I agree. Well traveled. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The only thing that is concerning to me is he's about a page away from being assassinated. Oh. And that's not very stable. But no, uh uh-uh. uh. He's going to lose some stability points for being assassinated. Uh, it's not his fault. Like, he didn't. So, what you're saying is it's not his fault that he was assassinated, but like, did you see what he was wearing? <laughs> <laughs> he had it coming. I mean, he come on. <laughs> After returning to the US, Malcolm X addressed a wide variety of audiences. He spoke regularly at meetings held by MMI and the OAAU and was one of the most sought after speakers on, he's doing the college circuit. All yeah. right. This is where I really, I mean, is that a set? Is that like a lot of comics when they do the college circuit, it's like, no, never mind. Scratch all that. I have nothing to say. <laughs> uh <laughs> It's like when I like realize that I'm stumbling through words that is bail on whatever my thought was. I'm like, no, 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 forget it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, like when you start saying something, you ever do this? You start saying something and you realize it's dumb and you're like, no, 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 no it's never mind. Forget it. Forget it. Forget no, it. No, I always just keep going in complete <laughs> silence. And... You no, know, it's, it's the worst. It, my way is you, you're doing the right thing. I do that and then I'm like, no, 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 never mind. And everyone's like, what? What were you going to say? And then it's a whole thing. And then I have to spend the next two minutes being like, I don't want to say it. I'm not going to say it. Yeah, a lot of build up. I start talking. I'll just start like I'll keep saying what I'm saying, especially if it's in a group. So group, and then when I realize it's dumb, but then I'll just like start talking quieter and quieter in the hopes that somebody will just start talking over me. And like, you, please, yeah. And, over me. and then, anyways, I went to the store and I got it. Slowly thing. turn the volume knob down. <laughs> <laughs> We are both very socially anxious people. That is something we definitely have in common. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So anyways, uh, Malcolm's uh, doing casinos. It's his later years. Uh, <laughs> casinos. Yeah. He's got a stint in Vegas, you know. Uh, uh, he addressed public meetings of the Socialist Workers Party, speaking at their militant labor forum. He was interviewed on the subject of segregation and the Nation of Islam by Robert Penn Warren for Warren's 1965 book, that I am not going to say the title of because okay. it contains troubling words. Throughout 1964, as his conflict with the Nation of Islam intensified, Malcolm X was repeatedly threatened. In February, a leader of Temple Number no. 7 ordered the bombing of Malcolm X's car. In March, Muhammad told Boston minister Louis X, later known as Louis Farrakhan, that hypocrites like Malcolm should have their heads cut off. Muhammad... Whoa! What the fuck is the matter with him? This is like Shakespearean. Yeah. This is like a. Tr- oh, I didn't know this. Ha- this is so interesting. He what an interesting totally story. On him. And yeah. he's, he's not just trying to discredit them, he's trying to kill this dude. Former best buds. Turned against each other. You yeah, know it's what? The Naruto it, Sasuke situation we got going on here. It was probably because Malcolm sided with the secretaries and he was like, Rose before <laughs> hose, dude. What the fuck? And that's Rose it. Before this, hose. this is why you shouldn't, you know, women just cause trouble. Bitches ruin everything. Bitches can ruin the strongest bond. I've been saying that for years. Yeah. Yeah. Less bitches, more bros. That's mm-hmm. what I want on my tombstone. Uh, oh shit. The April 10th edition of Muhammad Speaks 
featured a cartoon depicting Malcolm X's bouncing severed head. Muhammad, Whoa. not as cute as Malcolm X. Not, no. not quite as cute. Uh, all right, here we go. On June 8th, FBI surveillance recorded a telephone call in which Betty Shabazz was told that her husband was as good as dead. Four days later, and F- oh, Betty did change her last name. Okay, no yeah. longer Betty X. No longer a marriage. I'd be kind of pissed if I was going by Betty X and then and I was like, you're going to gonna make this. All the checks. You got to change everything. Yeah. It's a way cooler name. Yeah, yeah, it's a way cooler name. What a power move to like make <laughs> you take his last name and then change his last name and then make yeah. you change yours again. <laughs> I respect that. That gets him some hotness points. Um, on June 8th, oh, we already did that. Uh, four days later, an FBI informant received a tip that Malcolm X is going to be bumped off. Uh, the same month. Did they month, say bumped off? Did bumped they say bumped off? off? It's in the quotation line. It's going to be bumped off. Uh, I'm, I have, you know, I have my suicide material is too dark. People really pull back. I wonder if I can say <laughs> I'm thinking about bumping myself off. It sounds like you're going to, you're going to diddle yourself is what it sounds yeah. like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And then, that's the cutesy way to go about it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I got a noose. So I was cozy with a rope, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're just going to befriend a rope. Mm-hmm. I love your suicide bits. That's super funny. It's, um, uh, I was going to bump myself off. Uh, it sounds like I'm masturbating. I actually meant suicide, but either way, it's going to end with an odor. Am I right? <laughs> Am, I- <laughs> Am I right? I thought. Yeah. Either way. The room's going to smell like a dead body. So (laughs) (laughs) sorry. (laughs) No, you're good. You're good. Um, That same month, the nation sued to reclaim Malcolm X's residence in East Elmhurst, Queens. Wait, they're trying to take his apartment. The the nation of Islam is trying to take his place from him. Wait, his family ordered to vacate. How, wait, how, how, how did they manage that? I don't what know. did they do? I think it must have been theirs before. Okay. He split with the group. So like legally they're in the right, but I'm hardcore on Malcolm X's team, regardless yeah. of how it turns out. Like he's he's got he's got my vote. He's got my vote. He might be the contender. He could oust Ruth Bader Ginsburg as the number one. We'll see. We don't know for sure. Uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg has 26 out of 30. That's the record okay. right now. Yeah, okay. she got um, 10 stability, 8 hotness, and 8 uh, bonus points. So okay. we'll see. Yeah. His family was ordered to vacate, but on February 14th, 1965, the night before a hearing on postponing the eviction, the house was destroyed by fire. Probably an accident, right? Yeah, I think <laughs> yeah. so. Smoking in bed, that happens a lot. Definitely. You know? Malcolm, naughty Malcolm, naughty, naughty. Mm-hmm. On July 9th, Muhammad aide John Ali, suspected of being an undercover FBI agent, referred to Malcolm X by saying, anyone who opposes the Honorable Elijah Muhammad puts their life in jeopardy. Yo, Elijah Muhammad's a bitch. I'm <laughs> sorry, I'm just going to use that word. Like once every month, I use that word. And it kills me to use it, but it's just so accurate for him that I can't. Oh, I love calling people. I love it. I love I- it. It's one of those words that, like, it's it's fun to hear, but, like, I just have a block that keeps me from saying it. I used Mitch? to refer to Randy Disher from Monk. That's one of the <laughs> only times that I, I, like, confidently call him a bitch. And also the Green Power Ranger. Those are the two people that I confidently call a bitch without any hesitation. I always feel like, I don't know, I always, I like emasculating people, and <laughs> I... <laughs> It's it's much more fun to use it on men than it is to use it on women. Yeah. It's a whole thing when you use it on a girl. Yeah. If you take it personally. Yeah. Yeah. But I I like I like I like uh being a little bitch. That's my fa- oh being I like a it so bitch over there. Being Oof. a little bitch. Ugh. Oh my god, you use that masculinity against them. Uh-huh. The thing I was in a fraternity for years. I know all the tricks. I know I'm in their minds. You know I know how to get to these boys. <laughs> like I know how to hurt your feelings. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I did. I was in deep cover for years and years and years. <laughs> Roll of a lifetime. Uh, 
in the December 4th issue of Muhammad Speaks, Louis X wrote that such a man as Malcolm is worthy of death. Everyone's mad at Malcolm. Everyone's mad at Malcolm. So, uh, wait. So, the FBI infiltrated the nation. Um, one view, well, this isn't the nation. This is one suspected undercover FBI agent, not confirmed. That okay. was uh, Muhammad, uh, not Muhammad, uh, Elijah Muhammad's aide. Okay. Okay. Oh, I got it. I got that wrong. Um, okay. Yeah. That's what it was. The September 1964 issue of Ebony dramatized Malcolm X's defiance of these threats by publishing a photograph of him holding an N1 carbine while peering out of a window. Uh, on February 19th, 1965, Malcolm X told interviewer Gordon Parks that the Nation of Islam was actively trying to kill him. Uh, on February 21st, 1965, he was preparing to address the OAAU in Manhattan's Audubon Ballroom when someone in the 400-person audience yelled, whoops, I missed another N-word. When someone in the 400-person <laughs> audience yelled, N-word, get your hand out of my pocket. As Malcolm X and his bodyguards tried to quell the disturbance, a man rushed forward and shot him once in the chest with a sawed-off shotgun. Ooh. Yeah. And two other men charged the stage firing semi-automatic handguns. So Holy shit. Not yeah. So he got absolutely riddled with bullets. Malcolm X was pronounced dead at 3.30 p.m. Shortly arrived. He made it to the hospital. He fucking made it to the hospital. Are you kidding me? He had like 30 bullets in him. He's... Even his death is hot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 20, 21 gunshot wounds. The autopsy identified 21 Holy gunshot fuck. wounds. Holy yeah. fuck. Yeah. And he fuck died man. in the hospital. Made it to the hospital. 25, 21 gunshot wounds to the chest, left shoulder, arm, and legs, including 10 buckshot wounds from the initial shotgun blast. And thus ends Malcolm Little. Wow. What a story. Yeah. All that's left now is to rank the motherfucker. And let's see. I think we might have a new champion on our hands. We might. Mm -hmm. But we're going to mm -hmm. be fair. We're gonna. Mm -hmm. We're not going to boost his points on purpose. Let's talk hotness first. Okay. See, originally, his, uh, his sucking up to Elijah Muhammad was not very hot. No. But he, he was a 20-year-old, 20-something-year-old in prison. Right. And he was very resistant from what his uh, autobiography described, that he really struggled with the desire, with like the kneeling before someone, you know? Mm -hmm. And within a few years, he was on his own and eventually got killed by him because he was so good on his own. But it sounds like he got killed. If he hadn't have shown weakness early, maybe. Maybe he wouldn't have been killed? Maybe he wouldn't have been killed. Like I mean, if he the slightest bit of weakness, though, you know. Yeah, in but general, if he hadn't have been subservient early, and then risen above, yeah, I think it was the rising above. That pissed off little yeah. Muhammad, <laughs> the yeah. five two Napoleon Muhammad. Um, okay, uh, he is be mentioned stunning, six three, immaculately immaculately groomed, very mm -hmm. handsome man. That's worth yeah. considering with hotness too. What do you think of he's, the hotness, Tori? What do you think on a one to ten scale? Ten. You gonna give him a ten? He's incredibly hot. He's incredibly hot. I I can't imagine anyone doing better than him. So I'm gonna give yeah. him a ten too. Okay. Marriage material first. Ten out of ten hotness, Malcolm X. Marriage material first. Mm -hmm. Now we're getting into stability. Has okay. to be mentioned he was assassinated. He was assassinated <laughs> at a young age. That's got to be considered. How old was he? Well, he was assassinated in 1965, and he was born in 19... He was 40. He was 40 when he got assassinated. Okay. So... Um, so it, the question is, because ever from that, I think he's a pretty stable husband. Like, he, he married pretty young. Right after he got out of prison, he never went back to prison. He's been... He's had a stable job, you know? He's had a career path that's been pretty... In, pretty laid out in front of him. He didn't bang the secretaries. He didn't bang the secretaries. No affairs. And he told on the guy who he sided with the secretaries. Yeah. And he kept his bisexuality a secret so his wife yeah. wouldn't leave him. Yeah. What if him and Mohammed were lovers and this was actually like a love story and then he felt betrayed by the secretaries and then 
And then Mohammed, I, did he show up at Malcolm's death and they like looked each other in the eyes for one yeah. last time? I think Mohammed walked up to his coffin and kissed it as it was being buried. Mm-hmm. That's what I think too. I think they were lovers. They were lovers. Mm-hmm. Uh, as a real Romeo and Juliet, the you know, tale as old as time. Yeah. The civil rights leader and the, and the leader of the nation of Islam, secretly boning, just eating all kinds of pork. All kinds yeah. of pork for these two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what are we thinking? Stability wise. I'm thinking eight. Eight for eight? stability. Because he got assassinated. Okay. Other than that, pretty stable. Yeah. But you yeah. know what? He did he was a very busy man. So I feel like he, maybe he didn't have time for his family. Because you don't see his family mentioned much in there. No. But that could uh-uh. be because he kept his personal and his public life separate. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. He, yeah, because there's no divorce, there's no like controversy with his family or anything like that. Yeah. But uh, he got assassinated. So that's a big one. I'm gonna give him seven instability. I'm gonna go with you. Seven instability. Okay. So okay. we're at seventeen. Mm-hmm. And then I'm not bonus. gonna go lower than you. I feel like we're kind of playing chicken right now because neither of us wanna rate uh historical <laughs> civil rights figure poorly yeah so, we, both uh, want, we both have an interest in this being a high score <laughs> yeah so uh so you're gonna do seven on stability because he got assassinated and i'm gonna do an eight on stability because i care about black people more than you do <laughs> it's fair it's fair <laughs> we're a fucking strong arm you bitch <laughs> No, I'll go seven. I think I think the assassination is a big. Well, I'll tell you what, yeah, I'm gonna one up you right now. Bonus points, ten out of ten because of white guilt. Absolutely, okay. ten out of ten bonus points. You want to fucking uh, want to go on that, huh? You want to seems guiltier. You want to give him an yeah. eleven? We should give yeah. him an eleven for white guilt. He has an I'm gonna point. give him an eleven. Um, not because uh, I feel guilty, because it's. It's, I don't feel guilty because the thing is, uh, Karina, that it's not about me. Oh, um, so. you bitch. Oh, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> this is my show. He's getting a 10. This is my show. <laughs> You're a dirty bitch, Tori. Uh, Wait, so did he tie with RBG? He beat RBG. We have a new champion, fucking Malcolm X, champion of marriage material. 10 out of 10, hotness. 7 out of 10 stability, 10 out of 10 bonus points, 27 points, dwarfing Ruth Bader Gimbard's 26. So we have a new champion here. Yeah. The very first 10 out of 10 hotness. So right now the oh, paradigms, wow. the Malcolm X is the, is the champion for hotness. Ruth Bader uh-huh. Ginsburg is a champion for stability. Okay. Yeah. This has been fun. Oh, great. So uh, just to sum it up, if any... Um, Listeners are just tuning in now at the end. Uh, Karina and I have uh, decided that Malcolm X was very, very hot, but uh, neither of us agree with him politically. Yeah, That's we both, the, uh, uh, we both uh, just like everything that he did. Uh, <laughs> he super hot. We don't agree with anything he did. Yeah, uh, anything he's ever said or done. Um, uh, but we'd fuck right. him. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, weird. That's. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I really hope that people don't actually just listen to the end of this. <laughs> that would be a huge bummer. I did, I did so much posturing and uh, virtue signaling earlier that if they don't hear that first before what we said, then we're gonna be in trouble. Uh, I feel like no, we can't get. We ranked uh, his uh, black leader higher uh-huh. than. Uh, white woman leader That's so right. we win we, we win. won Racism, over we did yeah. it yeah mm-hmm. no one can ever call us racist ever again we are the best yeah yeah well tori uh thank you so much for being on the podcast tori yeah. ward is a very funny comedian you follow her on instagram and she's got a brand spanking new twitter yeah Bre- mm-hmm. fresh out the oven she needs yep. some followers. Get out, get out of there and follow Tori Ward. What is your Twitter handle, by the way? It's just I don't like, know. There's a bunch of numbers a collection of letters. It, and you can change it. And I don't know how to change it. And, um, <laughs> She's uh, really yeah. funny, though. And she, you, do you have anything on, uh, any, like, clips or anything on YouTube? No. Don't. Okay. I went on my YouTube, and then I had a couple subscribers, and I was like, 
felt so creeped out. I was like, why would somebody <laughs> so- out there and this Who's- is driving to you for nothing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You've got some mega fans out there. <laughs> Well, thank you, Tori. Um, we do this every week. Podcast is released every Monday. I also have a Twitch stream, Karina Plays Old Games, that is every Sunday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, so follow me on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, the works. I got a link tree on all my things. Yeah. Thank you, Tori. Thank and you. have fun listening. Bye-bye, everyone.